Sunday, February 3rd at 6 a.m., Inspectors Burke and De Holle go to 133 Rue de Charonne, home of the Solions. His wife, Juliette, opens the door. Albert is still in bed. Inspectors then ask him to follow them. He doesn't object. He dresses, kisses his son, and leaves with the police. The deputy head of police, the chief inspector Lebrun, will hear his testimony. Albert Solion confidently repeats previous statements verbatim. His visit to Madame Erbelding. His proposal to take little Marta to the Bataclan with the free ticket he'd been given. He again explains that his wife was not able to get time off work, so he decided to take Marta with him to the show. It was 2.10 in the afternoon. We ordered two lattes, which were served by a boy aged 30 to 35 years old, of medium height, with a mustache. I paid one franc 20 for them, explained Albert. Around three, Mart went to the bathroom. After 10 minutes, when she did not return, Albert began to look, first inside the establishment, then around the outside. About half past three, he returned home, asking if anyone had seen the girl. Then I went over to Madame Erbelding's and I explained what had happened. Chief Inspector Lebrun found that Solion's story lacked detail, so he asked him to accompany him to the Bataclan in order to confirm his statement. spectacle et effectivement pour les familles le, en particulier le jeudi après-midi puisque le jeudi c'était le c'était la c'était notre mercredi aujourd'hui pour les écoles et donc il euh, y avait un spectacle certainement de chanteurs de chanteuses d'animation il y avait peut-être aussi des animations genre clown ou ou acrobate ou choses comme ça qui étaient vraiment famille parce que bien sûr, je ne vous parle pas de certains spectacles qui, le soir, eux, étaient beaucoup plus osés. Pour l'époque, bien sûr, ce qui nous ferait rigoler aujourd'hui, mais c'est-à-dire les femmes en tenue couleur chair, ce qu'on appelait le nu, et le, non pas le striptease, mais le nu, les, les revues nues, et qui en fait étaient très habillées hein, par rapport à ce qu'on voit aujourd'hui. <rire> Il y avait beaucoup de personnel parce qu'il y avait non seulement euh, des ouvreuses, bien sûr, placières, mais en plus il y avait les garçons qui servaient euh, aux tables. Hein. Donc euh, c'était assez contrôlé, il y avait du monde, hein, il y avait du monde. Et puis le personnel ne coûtait pas euh, ce qu'il coûte aujourd'hui. Donc on, euh, il, y avait, il y avait beaucoup de monde. L'équipe, euh, euh, c'était une énorme salle. Et donc euh, même, même pour les matinées euh, du mercredi, euh, je pense qu'il y avait du monde. In the presence of the Bataclan's director, Solion retraced the path he'd taken in the establishment with the little girl. He said that he'd been given two red tickets to the first floor balcony. The manager then pointed out that tickets allowing access to the balcony were green. Among the employees, nobody remembered Solion and the little Marta, but there are so many customers. He then points out two armchairs, number 155 and 157, where they were sitting. Asked about the show, he said he saw a young woman opening, when in fact it was a man by the name of Bretigny who opened first. The manager brings them over to the waiters who worked during the show, but none remembers Solion. Mrs. Dutreuil, the lady in charge of the toilets, does not remember having seen a girl fitting Marta's description. Back at the station, Solion is imprisoned. It was discovered that he was wanted for embezzlement. On May 31st, 1902, he stole the 1,000 franc note that his employer at the time, Mr. Picard, had entrusted him to change. He moved the same day without leaving an address. And since then, 
he was actively being sought by the police. With Solion detained, the investigation continues. The inspectors go back to question Mrs. Airbelding, who describes precisely how Solion took Marta to the show. He said he came to take the girl home where his wife, who was having lunch, was waiting to take her to the concert at the Bataclan. He added that it was his wife who sent him, as he had to start work at two in the afternoon. Seeing the joy of the child, she acquiesced, saying, if it's to go with Julienne, that's fine. Albert replied, do you think it's to go with me? I told you I have to work at two. Mrs. Erbelding then dressed Mart in a clean dress and a new hat. So Leon hurried her to get dressed. Hurry, Mart, he said. Julian is waiting for you and I'll be late because I have to start work at two o'clock. It seemed more and more that Albert's testimony was confused, perhaps because of the emotion the disappearance of the girl provoked in him. On February 5, 1907, the press got hold of the case. The Petit Parisien headline said, Unexplained disappearance of a little girl, Marta Erbelding, has she been killed? All the papers report her strange disappearance. In the public opinion, there's a crime epidemic, and not a day goes by without the press reporting sordid or bloody crimes, gangs spreading terror throughout France. Reporters gather all the information they can get on what they feel will be a sensational crime. C'est-à-dire que la presse s'est industrialisée. On est depuis les années 1880-90 dans l'âge des rotatives, c'est-à-dire qu'on tire des journaux non plus à la feuille, ce qui était long et coûteux, mais par, en, par des bandes de papier qui se déroulent presque indéfiniment dans des rotatives, c'est beaucoup moins coûteux. Donc se développe une presse à un sou, un sou c'est 5 centimes, tout le monde peut se payer un journal. Euh, les tirages s'accroissent, les porteurs de journaux, se répandent dans les rues euh, et donc vont toucher tous les publics. Euh, un journal comme le Petit Journal euh, ambitionne de toucher aussi bien euh, les, le bourgeois que la concierge, que le petit artisan, que l'ouvrier. Euh, et donc euh, on arrive à des tirages très impressionnants. Le Petit Journal, euh, à partir de 1890, c'est un million d'exemplaires imprimés. Donc euh, facilement 2 à 3 millions de lecteurs, sachant qu'un exemplaire va, va circuler dans la famille. C'est une puissance importante. Cette presse qui se développe, c'est une presse qui est de plus en plus illustrée. Et à partir de 1890, le Petit Journal va même avoir un supplément illustré avec deux grandes gravures en couleur. Et pour des Français qui sont habitués à une presse en noir et blanc, euh, l'irruption de la couleur, et même de couleurs assez crues, eh bien ça change tout, ça donne l'illusion du vrai. Euh, ces gravures peuvent nous paraître un peu désuètes, un peu étranges, avec nos yeux d'aujourd'hui, nous qui sommes saturés d'images et d'images en couleur. Mais à l'époque, c'était une grande nouveauté. Et bien sûr, les faits divers vont occuper une place importante dans cette imagerie populaire qui se développe avec la grande presse. Inutile de dire que les apaches, et de façon générale les crimes, euh, c'est pain béni pour cette presse qui va attiser ce sentiment d'insécurité euh, auprès en particulier de la population urbaine. February 6th. At the police station, it's decided to re-interview Solion. He repeats and confirms his statement that he was in the Bataclan with little Marta. February 7th, the head of the police, the divisional commissioner Amar, sends a circular asking all commissioners to forward any information regarding the disappearance of Marta Airbuilding. The press feeds the drama, and attention is starting to turn to Solion. Did he lose her or sell her, is the headline in La Matin. That same day, Inspector Bormons will interview a key witness, Mrs. Lepsch lives on 122 Rue de Charonne, opposite Solion's apartment. On January 31st, she returned home at half past two. On the way home, I opened my dining room window to check the time on the clock hanging in front of the jewelry shop at 119 Rue de Charonne, she said. When I opened the window, I noticed a girl at Mr. Solion's window. I looked at the time. It was exactly half past two. 
Closing the window, I saw Solion next to the little girl. He let her in and closed the door. The next day, February 8th, Solion is taken out of his cell to confront him with Mrs. Lepsch, who confirmed having seen him at half past two with the girl at the window of his apartment. He replied that she is mistaken because at quarter past two, he was at the show at the Bataclan. So Leon is then confronted with different employees from the Bataclan. No one recognizes him, and the worker in charge of seating on the first floor balcony says he never sat so Leon and Little Mart on January 31st. Mr. Lemoyte, controller at the Bataclan, claims not to have seen them either. Since Solion insists he intended the concert, he asks the name of the artists who sang that day. I remember Minotti, and especially Mrs. Godet struck me with her vulgar songs. Mr. Lemoyte retorts, Mrs. Godet did not sing that day. It became evident that Solion had not attended the show. What had happened to Little Mart? intervient donc euh, ce que l'on appelle à l'époque la cuisine hein, dans la police, c'est-à-dire qu'en fait il faut que l'aveu étant la reine des preuves, il faut qu'un accusé se mette à table, hein, les expressions sont intéressantes, cuisine, se mettre à table et tout, euh, soleillant, comme il est sous le coup d'une condamnation par contumace qu'il a, euh, il n'a jamais euh, évidemment... Euh, Purger, ça permet, est, on n'est plus dans le domaine de la garde à vue, on, on, le, on le maintient au dépôt puisqu'il est dans le... Et là, ça permet de l'interroger tous les jours, tous les jours, tous les jours. So Leon is then confronted with his contradictions. The lies he told Mrs. Airbuilding to convince her to let her daughter go with him. It's my wife who will accompany her. I have to be at work at 2 p.m. Details about the concert at the Bataclan which he never attended. The story he told Marta's parents, who trusted him, playing the desperate friend who had failed to protect the little girl. The police don't give in, and they push him into a corner. Finally, he cracks. Okay, he says, it was me. Crying, he says, I request that you ignore what I've said so far. I want to tell the truth now. So Leon then gives this first version. I thought my wife would be at home when I left the air buildings with little Marta. My wife wasn't there, but I still wanted to go to the concert. I don't want to go without Julienne, said little Marta. I teased her, I played with her, and then I wanted to caress her and make her stay because she wanted to go home to her parents. Wanting to keep her here, I felt the body of this girl in my arms I squeezed her and she screamed. To prevent her screaming, I tightened my grip around her throat. She fell lifeless, dead. Then I took some sacking that I had at home. I folded the body slightly. I covered her head with a coat. I took everything to the railroad station and I put it in the left luggage. I didn't rape the child. I was crazy. I apologize for what I did. After his confession, Solion was quickly taken to the left luggage of the railway station. The package containing the body of little Marta bore the number 1274. It was left on January 31st at 5.10 p.m. under the name of Paris. The package weighed 31 kilos 500 grams and contained the body of the girl. At the sight of the corpse, Solion gave new details. He said that while playing with Mart, he touched the child's genitals and then he wanted to possess her. 